So Vladimir Putin is a gangster? You mean like a thug, a criminal, a nasty individual? Do you know, Tristan, do you even know who this week's certified G is? I, I think I do. I think I do. Because I because we spoke about it today and we said, ooh, he should be certified G. And obviously I do no preparation for this. None of this is scripted, by the way. This is an unscripted show. But I know who the certified G is because we've been fans of this guy for a long motherfucking time. They mean they think that Vladimir Putin is cool, a cool certified G. Oh, this is going to be an interesting video. Bayekale. Sar experience. So I thought I was going to agree with Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate that Vladimir Putin is like Tony Soprano, maybe a little bit glorifiable on the big screen as a fictional character, but in reality, a thug, right? But Apparently, that's not going to be the case. So who is Andrew Tate? If you don't know, he blew up on social media pretty recently, became this kind of viral phenomenon. But as of yesterday, his controversial comments, which were actually nothing to do with this war in Ukraine. I'm actually here in Odessa Mama. Let me just pan around. You can see I'm in the city garden. It's like around, I think, a day 180 of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This video, actually, I'm about to first react to, it seems like it was published on Tate's official channel on the day before the invasion, just hours before this February 24th invasion. So that's what he thought was super cool and appropriate <laughs> to publish uh, the day more or less of the invasion. And the war has obviously been going on since 2014, but had been localized in Crimea and Donbass up until then. But according to Andrew Tate, who just lost access to his Instagram and to his Facebook yesterday, um, because of other controversial comments about described as uh, misogynistic and something to do with mental health where he mocked men who have mental health problems in the past. Anyways, he is still a huge phenomenon because his minions, they will uh, co uh, collate his content, break it down and spam everywhere on the internet. I did make a video responding to how he got on in Ukraine. This is going to be relevant for this reaction. And yeah, he likes to describe himself as James Bond. I was James Bond. I am James Bond, but I'm now the front. Do you understand this? But in reality, he's starting to come across more as a Bond villain than actually the real James Bond himself. So, anyways, let's get into this reaction where he's calling Vladimir Putin on the eve of this invasion. There's probably this cage killed, this stage killed maybe 100,000 people here in Ukraine between Ukrainian civilians, Ukrainian soldiers, and Russian soldiers. He called him a certified G. What a cool dude. Let's go into it. I can understand a mind like that. Give me that. So let's uh, start off with the first little clip in their Putin fetish. Oh, I want that. I'll take it. Interesting. On day 180 of this invasion, not sh quite sure that Putin took what he wanted, considering I'm sitting here in the Dessa Mama. And uh, part of it is to do with this battleship, the Moskva, that was off the shore here on the Black Sea. But uh, yeah, it's now swimming with the fishes, to make an analogy with Italian gangsters. Give me it. Well, it is, and the historical context and the law. No, 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 no. I didn't ask you about historical context or law or lines on a map. Give me that. Because you don't want it. Because you know, when I go to Ukraine, I've got a similar attitude. Interesting that Tristan Tate says that. That's Andrew Tate's brother. Uh, because in my last video, which I'll link up in the card down below in the description, they got robbed <laughs> in Ukraine. Some girls tried to rob them when they went home with them. Yeah. Great success, sir. You really took what you wanted. And, and you know another thing about him that makes him a G. Oh, no, this is maybe the biggest reason ever. This actually scares me to watch the video. I might duck and hide. Andrew, hit it. Luckily, it's not a video. It's just... Oh, my. Steven Seagal. That's their other hero. When was Steven Seagal cool last time? 10 years ago? 20 years ago? I remember when I was pretty young watching. I think it was Under Siege was the film. But has he done anything interesting? It's a bit of an odd person to have as an idol, especially when you see what he's like today since he moved to Russia and, yeah, the kind of very um, lowbrow propaganda he spews out, which is really cringeworthy. He's friends with he's fr Aikido. Aikido! You're going to go up to the Kremlin and say, you can't do that because there's this line on a map. And I don't know. I think, I think he can do it if he wants. And you're like, who's that? You turn to the left, you turn to the right, you see nobody, and then you come face forward 
and it's Jack Cole, Casey Ryback, Steven Seagal himself in your face, front kicking you with his Aikido powers? Uh, imagine Steven Seagal actually doing that today. He doesn't seem to have the energy. He looks like a doddery old man. In fact, they look like two betas, uh, Putin and uh, Seagal today. But anyways, this is uh, Andrew and Tristan Tate's heroes, apparently. And after their fiasco in Ukraine, I guess they do have a lot in common with um, Vladimir Putin at this stage. Uh, they both failed in Ukraine because it's day 180. And uh, I guess the Tates also spent a considerable amount of time not getting what they wanted as well. Anyways, let's go on <laughs> and see what other train wreck comments they got to make. Just like Putin's train wreck invasion. I just like, everyone knows why he's a G. Like all the Western leaders are like, oh, I love my wife. Lame. He's all like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm a attack. And then they got the kind of uh, erotic photos of Putin riding, the homoerotic photos of Putin riding bareback, quite literally. Is he bareback? I'm pretty sure he is bareback. But he's, tell you, and he's got his, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> on, uh, these guys are way too excited looking at a, a topless guy, I have to say. Okay, when I saw this a couple of weeks ago, I thought, ah, oh, this can't be serious. These guys are just kind of like trolling. Uh, it's almost like satire. They can't really be seriously praising Putin. Uh, it seems like they shot this on the eve of the war just simply to get attention. It seems to be the main currency that Andrew Tate works upon. And I thought, well, yeah, now after the war, has started the main part of the war that they realize, yeah, he ain't such a cool dude anymore. But alas, let's look at the next clip. I mean, I'll tell you now, you look at Ukraine, the, yeah. the, the situation in Ukraine was completely, I believe it's completely NATO's fault. They, they knew what they were doing. They kept yes. prodding Russia. They kept poking the bear. They kept poking the bear. They kept poking the bear. Oh my, anyone who keeps using this analogy, poking the bear, it's so low IQ. <laughs> And now that Russia has finally retaliated, which it had no choice but to do. He's sounding, well, basically like Steven Seagal and Jeremy Corbyn. Pouring arms in isn't going to bring about a solution. It's only going to prolong and exaggerate this war. We might be in for years and years of a war in the Ukraine. His own self-interest, right? He had to eventually do something. It has been going on a long time. He eventually retaliated. I'm very, very glad NATO hasn't stepped in. Of course, I don't want war, World War III, but we're just sending loads and loads of weapons to delay the inevitable, just to cause more casualties and more, more pain for both sides, more headaches for Russia. You think the Americans give a shit? Ukraine could just roll over, give up what they give up what Russia wants and just end all of it, right? Wow. So basically he thinks that Ukraine should surrender. This is a guy who paints himself as a big tough guy. I'm a soldier. And in fact, he came here to shoot footage for his Instagram and his YouTube videos actually in Ukraine, basically pretending to be a soldier and a big hard guy who's gonna go out there and take down the bodies and shooting guns. He actually went from what I can see to similar places to where I went here in Ukraine a few days. And I believe probably with the same people. And it was actually really uh, cool, immersive, realistic experience with basically the Ukrainian military. And then this guy has the audacity to sit there and say, and tell the real Ukrainian soldiers that they should roll over and end it, just let Russia win and what, commit 300 butches here in the center of uh, Odessa, just go around massacring and raping everyone around me here. We got a few grandmas behind us, got a few guys sitting there. This side we have some local, some local girls taking a walk around. So this is this big macho guy's uh, plea to the Ukrainian soldiers. Just surrender, just end it. Why would, I mean, why should NATO uh, give weapons to Ukrainians to defend themselves? When he sits in, from what I can understand, in Romania where he lives with Article 5 NATO protection, which basically is protecting his ass from getting invaded because I'm not too convinced he's going to shoot himself out of anything when it comes down to it. I'm pretty sure he's either going to do one or two things. Either he's going to fucking panic and fucking flee. He ain't going to stand around to do the hardcore fighting. Apparently he thinks Ukrainian soldiers just like roll over. So literally, well, he would flee rather than roll over. Or he would in fact roll over when the, if the Russians ever came and surrounded his house or they, you know, detained him somewhere and he would give them everything they want. He'd basically collaborate. And I'm gonna play a clip for you now, where in fact, 
that's more or less what he did just up the road from here in Moldova, in neighboring Moldova, where I just was uh, a few days ago. He went to the Hey, accidentally, it's actually a hilarious story of just like how not to travel around this region uh, if you have common sense. You know, I'm in Transnistria, which is a separatist republic that's allied with Russia, within Moldova, and there was, there was a conflict back in the 90s, and de facto it's independent, not legalized, not recognized internationally as a separate country, but de facto it is, and there are some Russian troops there. Uh, but when you go to the border, actually, you're going to meet the Transnistrian soldiers. I've had those experiences described on this channel. And let's see how hard man, tough guy, pretend soldier, playing his little toy soldiers there for the video on his Instagram that I guess is now gone. <laughs> his Instagram got took down. But let's see how he reacted when he was on the border. Anyways, let's go up to Chisinau, the capital of Moldova. Andrew Tate, who has blown up and become an enormous social media star, especially in the last couple of months. He's there telling, retelling an anecdote. They went in my bag and they started going through my bag looking for money. And they went through it and they found about 7,000 American dollars. $7,000? Are you kidding me? That's exactly why people invest in hiring me. That would justify my fee immediately. I'm just a fucking idiot who went to a shitty song contest and got in the wrong taxi. My taxi driver, Mr. Moron, decided to drive through a fucking war zone. I didn't know. I didn't know this was still technically a war. I had no fucking idea. I look at the rally guy who was kept separate to me and T. But I kept looking out the window and the rally guy was still out on the gravel road. So I should have known not to trust a 12 year old. He's standing outside with a gun pointed at his head, fucking wet in his pants. Me and Tristan are sitting there arrested in our underwear, handcuffed, saying, look, we're not spies. We're not spies. Why are you dressed like soldiers? We're not spies. Anyway. I sat and said to the guy, I said, look, let me get my phone. I'll make some phone calls, this will go away. He says, you're not going to touch your phone for a very long time. I said, my friend. He said, don't call me your friend. I said, fine. I'm not a spy, I'm an idiot. Just take the money that's in my bag and let me go. And this is what I love about corrupt countries. He didn't say yes or no. He spoke to, turned to his friend and said something in Russian. Da, 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 da. They spoke in Russian for a few seconds and I can guess what he said. He said, count how much money's in his bag. They went in my bag and they started going through my bag looking for money. And they went through it and they found about 7,000 American dollars. From this region, I mean the capital of Moldova, Chisinau. And about, I guess it's like 45 minutes down the road, an hour, you get to Transnistria and the border, the de facto border. Transnistria is an unrecognized, self-proclaimed republic here in Moldova. Basically, it's not recognized under international law, but they operate a de facto border, not a de jure one. And there, there are soldiers, and in that case, Andrew Tate gave them $7,000 in order to gain his freedom. So the first thing is, I find it very unlikely that Russian special forces from the actual Russian army are hanging out on the Transistrian border waiting for tourists coming from Eurovision. That is kind of a hilarious idea <laughs> in reality. So a lot more likely in my experience having been there is that, uh, yeah, there were Transnistrian soldiers. Maybe there were also some Russian soldiers there. I've come across both as I've driven around. I described some of my stories in Transnistria and other podcasts. I'll put them uh, down below in the description, also up on cards. If you want to go and listen to my stories, being in Transnistria on borders and actually really having an all, well, not quite an altercation, but anyways, they did wave their guns around at me and get a little bit irate on that border, so I can empathize that that kind of situation can be unsettling. Yes, no one likes having a gun waved around with them, but there is no reason, in the time period that he's talking about, for sure, about being scared of the Transistrians doing very much because, well, basically the evidence is from beforehand that they have never shot uh, a foreigner, a Westerner, at their border, at their de facto border, and uh, in general, they are more likely to try and intimidate you, in my experience. So, very unlikely, as I said, that they're actually Russian special forces waiting for the two tours from Eurovision uh, to come there. And regardless of whether he, uh, uh, that he looks like a soldier, and obviously I don't look like a soldier at all, my strategy in those kind of situations is never to offer them money because the moment that you offer them money you are attempting to bribe a public official and basically at that point 
they can do what they want to you. Not only take all your money, like he said, basically take all my money. They seemed happy with the seven thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm sure, those Transnistrian uh, soldiers or border guards, or let's just say they were special forces from Russia. They just made a lot of money compared to what I expect they make in a normal month. Probably half a year's salary once they divide it up amongst them, themselves. Uh, if you are in that situation, maybe you're going to be in a position where they ask you for money, uh, and that's obviously a very different scenario because then they have asked, they have tried to get you to bribe them. But my approach is always to talk. Now, of course, I speak Russian, and in Transnistria, that is the language that the soldiers are going to speak. That would allow me to negotiate my way out of it. That's actually what happened when I was at the border, and I did have an incident. Well, I caused an incident, we caused an incident, me and my Italian friends, and they waved guns around kind of in my direction, we're shouting, So, if you don't understand what's going on, it is going to be pretty intimidating. But yeah, giving them $7,000 when in reality, they were going to let him go. <laughs> if he hadn't given them anything uh, after a certain amount of time, that uh, is kind of a personal decision to make. Would have been simpler to have paid me that money <laughs> and I would have avoided us ever getting in that situation or driving in that direction. Uh, but anyways, he managed to tell the story in a funny way, I guess appeals to his target audience because they think, oh, how cool, is there special Russian forces and you know, he has so much money, just throws and gets out of the problem. You should never have been in that situation in the first place uh, where you have to be handing over $7,000, I don't care who you are, $7,000 to border guards because yeah, if you'd had more, 50K, 100K, that actually would have been an issue anyways because you traveling more than $10,000 or 10,000 euros over borders here. You're supposed to declare it, and if you don't declare it and they find it, the border guards then, they will try their best to confiscate it in some shape or form, either formally or informally. So back here in Free Odessa, because the soldiers defending this city didn't roll over. In fact, it was uh, a combination of the soldiers up in Vaznesensk, which is just a little bit north of Mykolaiv, probably about two, two hours from here, who defended uh, their town, blew up the bridge, sent the Russian forces packing back towards Kherson. Otherwise, they would have got around actually to a road just near Bevromaisk to go to Dobeshar, which is in Transnistria, and they would have been able to encircle this city, almost Odessa. Also, you got the Moskva, which was the Russian flagship, and now lies at the bottom of the Black Sea over there, and of course, Snake Island, which you're probably familiar with from the media, where the Russian troops were also ejected from. And this city, as a result of real soldiers, not Choker Tate there, Try Hard Tate, uh, who basically sounds like Jeremy Corbyn and an old doddery Steven Seagal, worshipping with his little like uh, fetish over Vladimir Putin, who's basically a big failure. Ah, what a joke. <laughs> I would advise Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, they're probably not interested in coming back to Ukraine because they, they seem to have more or less struck out here with the, with the hotties. Probably not the best idea to try and come back to Ukraine. Not that I think the Ukrainians are actually going to do anything bad to them or way too civilized for that at the border. Probably be persona non grata like someone else who uh, I previously have met. But yeah, I wouldn't uh, like to be Andrew or Tristan Tate, if they were to show up here and some of the real soldiers uh, took umbrage, so what advice Mr. Pretend Soldier, Mr. Tryhard, Mr. Pretend, Mr. Exaggerator, because uh, yeah, he meant trying to make it sound cool that he basically choked and gave some transition soldier $7,000 because he couldn't handle the pressure. He cracked. Anyways, what a joke. And on top of it, it's probably for his own good that he just hides in kind of mediocre Romania. It's probably his place. So if you'd like to avoid ending up on the border with Transnistria, having failed at Eurovision, which could have actually been a cool trip, to be fair. I don't think the actual idea of going to Eurovision was actually that stupid or anything. It just should have viewed it more as a way to network and build up your social circle. I have that in my last video. Uh, I'll link it up in a card down below in the description. Where actually, that is kind of where you meet the hottest chicks uh, in my experience with clients. And actually, they probably have more luck doing that back in Romania where they live and they can build up their own reputation there. Uh, but you definitely want to have a plan and that gets stuck on the border 
<laughs> Transnistria basically getting shut down by the local border guards for $7,000. And a way to avoid that is perhaps by investing in living the Zara experience with me. I'm going to put down below a link to the application form because this is by application only. And I will link here a video that I shot with clients when we went to Kharkiv uh, back late last year before the war with this latest invasion that Andrew Tate seems to think is all the West fault and not his hero, Vladimir Putin's, when clearly it's Putin's decision to invade. And you can go and get a good idea of what we do on the Tsar experience now with Evade, which of course is all thanks to uh, Vladimir Putin and Russia shelling the center of Kharkiv. We will not be going to Kharkiv for the moment, but there are a few good alternatives. And actually where Andrew Tate was transiting through, which is going to be Kishinev, Moldova, also uh, one option. Other ones are in the region are going to be in the greater region, which I think are the best spots at the moment. Places like in the Baltics or actually in Central Asia, you got Kazakhstan, you got Almaty, one of my favorite cities and a few other secret places that we can discuss if you are the type of person who I think is going to enjoy and revel in the Tsar experience. So anyways, you can go and apply for that after you watch the video from Kharkiv. So I want to close out this video with a little bit of humor because that's basically the way to treat someone like Andrew Tate who is a complete muppet at the end of the day with his um, geopolitical analysis. And actually that, uh, when I think about it, that clip, because he also mentions in it about the ruble rebounding is probably in like at least April. So he was already aware of things like the massacres that had occurred in the parts that were occupied by Russia. So to come out with that kind of like really low IQ uh, propaganda, even most of the Russian uh, government has kind of abandoned because it's gotten a bit too ridiculous with, for example, now Finland and Sweden about to join NATO. Obviously the NATO expansion is not the reason that uh, Russia invaded. Vladimir Putin himself basically compared himself to Peter the Great because he was a, considered a great imperial figure. It's just imperialism, baby, eta imperialism, dietka. And to continue with the humor, um, well, the whole situation is not really that humorous because it is bloody tragic, but I just found this kind of interesting. It is, it's a clip I'm going to play you where Andrew Tate is mocking the idea of learning a foreign language. Obviously, I've never heard him actually speak in a foreign language. I actually believe his brother does speak some Romanian. I listened to one of his uh, vlogs where he did speak for a few seconds in it. Uh, and there were plenty of arguments to make about just relying in English when you travel. But I want you to think about one thing. As he as insults anyone who basically he has to come into contact with that doesn't speak English, I want you to just ponder on the situation of those Transnistrian border guards and soldiers, those idiots and morons that I guess Andrew Tate thinks are beneath them, as they sat there and they shook down this choker Tate guy for $7,000 because he cracked and told them where his money was uh, and how much they really needed to be able to speak English when they made probably between them, I would guess, a year's salary in an hour. This is Anya Dopobachina from free Odessa Mama in free Ukraine, where real men with a real man mindset don't just roll over and surrender. Sar experience. Most languages are a bullshit language. English is the international language of the world, it's the language of the internet, it's the language of movies, it's the language of music. Everyone in Romania speaks English, basically everyone speaks English. And if you go to a country and someone doesn't speak English, they're probably a fucking idiot. So if I go to China and I try and talk English and they come up, oh, I don't understand. Because they speak streets, they're stupid. Well, stupid people don't speak English. I don't need to talk to stupid people. I want to talk to smart people.